We interrupt this broadcast to bring you important information. Have we been doing YouTube wrong all this time? Recently, I had access to VidIQ, the full product, for a full month for a dollar, and I took full advantage of it. I went on to it. I used it diligently every day. I used its recommendations for thumbnails. I used its recommendations for, you know, words, for video ideas, for tags. I, I went through all its lessons. I did everything diligently for a month. And you know how much difference it made to the channel, to the channel growth? How many more subscribers I got because of vidIQ? Nothing. It made no difference whatsoever. I got no more subscribers than I'd had the previous month. I got no more subscribers than I'd had the month before. Nothing made a difference. In fact, it was probably one of the worst months that I'd ever had for revenue. So what went wrong? But I looked at this and I'm thinking to myself, all this advice seems sound and these guys built big channels doing it. And then I'm, I'm obviously looking at other people. If you're a creator out there, you've always looked at, you know, some other people out there who are giving you good advice or what appears to be good advice on how to build your channel quickly and effectively. But are they right or are they wrong? Because they've got an inbuilt advantage and most of their channels are purely educational channels targeted at you. And when they say niche down, their niche isn't small. Because their niche is every creator on YouTube that wants to build their channel or make it bigger or better or get more money. Their niche is enormous. So their niche down doesn't mean niche down. It means hit everybody they possibly can. And maybe that's why their channels build so quickly and have so many hits and subscribers and make so much money off advertising revenue because... They have a built-in audience that's just desperate for the information that they're giving out. But that information isn't necessarily going to apply to you, is it? Because if you are, for instance, let's say, a cupcake decorator, or you're really into physics and you're a bit of a guru in that, or even worse, you're into something like quantum physics, or you're into particle physics, or you're or you're, you know, you're into a narrow band of physics, or you're into the optical properties of light, or you've got a whole treatise to give to people about how filters make a difference when you're taking photo, you know, photographs. So you've, everybody's got their own niche. But when you niche down on YouTube and start tunneling in to your audience, your audience is getting tighter and tighter and smaller and smaller. And then you've got to find that audience. Now, there's three and a half billion people on YouTube. So your audience might be, might be tens of thousands of people, maybe hundreds of thousands or millions of people. But that's still a tiny proportion of the amount of people that's on YouTube. So how are you going to find them? And remember, the advice you were given was niche down and the algorithm will find those people for you. But will it? Will it really? Because you're now asking it to do an awful lot. I've been giving this some thought, and then I thought, this isn't how we normally consume entertainment. You know, if you put yourself in, I mean, and and these guys that try and give you advice, they always say, look at your avatar. Who's your avatar? Who's your average viewer? And you think, let's not think like that. Let's let's take a step back and go, what do I watch? If I'm looking for entertainment, what do I watch? Well, I go out and I go onto YouTube and I watch, I watch an incredible amount of disparate things. I'll watch things on conspiracy theories. I'll watch things on how to disassemble a camera. I'll watch things on, you know, the news, current events, what's happening in the world. I'll watch things on comedies. I'll watch clips from comedy shows that are funny. I'll watch movies. So if I'm like that, am I that different from anybody else? So if everybody else is doing that, why are we niching down? And then think about this, because before YouTube, before the internet, when we went to consume information and media, you know, when we looked to be entertained, we either sat in front of the TV or went to the pictures, the, the movies. 
So if you're going to the movie, you're going to watch a specific thing and you know it's going to be a movie. But when you sat down in front of the TV for an evening to be entertained, you didn't fire on the TV and then pick one channel and stick with it, did you? No, no. What you did was you looked to see what was on and then you looked, you watched the things that you were interested in, whether that be a documentary or a comedy show or a talent show or whatever, or a soap opera or a movie. You look at all these different things and they might be on one channel or they might be on, they might be spread across numerous other channels. So why limit your channel? Why limit its chances of hitting an audience member? By sticking to one thing. You know, I mean, once in a once in a blue moon, I'll go on and you know look for something on how to how to change the bulb on a, a Vauxhall Astra, right? Once in a blue moon, because the bulb's gone and I need to change the bulb. Now, I'm not gonna subscribe to that channel. In fact, I'll probably never ever go back to that channel. So Nation Down has done that guy very little other than provide a valuable service to people looking to change the rear tail lamp bulb on a Vauxhall Astra. Why limit yourself? Don't be. Don't be the guy, the go-to guy for tail lamp bulbs on Vauxhall Astras. Why would you want to be the guy that people come and go, I wonder what, he's put something up new today. Oh, he's put something up about conspiracy theories and it looks like a laugh. I'll watch that. Or... He's doing some political thing about the news. Oh, I can't be bothered. I'm not going to watch that. Oh, but now he's talking about, you know, now he's got a different thing up and it's about consciousness and what happens when you die and 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 the whole meaning of human existence. And it's like, well, maybe I'll watch that or I'll just I'll watch this compilation he's put up of conspiracy theories for the month and I'll fall asleep. He's got a droning voice. Hey, why not? Why not give yourself a bigger chance as possible to hit as many people as possible? Because there's three and a half billion people on YouTube, two, two odd billion active users on YouTube. Why limit yourself to a niche? So that I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that anymore. I've thrown away all the advice that VidIQ gave me because it made no difference. And since then, I've doubled the subscription on the on the channel. In the last month, I've gone from 1,500 subscribers to over 3,000 subscribers. Most of it's come from shorts. I don't watch a lot of shorts. I don't consume a lot of shorts. I quite enjoy them. I take little snippets of comedy clips, put subtitles on them because they're Scottish, <laughs> and post them up there, and people love them. And that's, that's, that's up to those people to consume then. I guarantee those people don't watch my movie reviews or don't watch my conspiracy new show we had the you know different courses for different people but i'm still putting a variety of content out there and and the algorithm you might go oh but the algorithm won't know who to give your content to so it'll spread it wide great spread it wide the more people it spreads it to the better because the bigger the chance of people liking your content and then coming back and and you know watching you so why not so that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be looking at providing as much content as I can on as many different pro, uh, as many different topics as I want to, and that's the difference. Because I think if you niche down, you get so focused on providing. Oh, I need to deliver this. I need to deliver this. I need this. And what happens when you run out of ideals? What happens when you run out of stuff to create? And your channel's starting to stagnate because the people who were coming to it to watch one particular thing don't get that anymore. So where do they go? They go somewhere else. And you're going, people are not watching. I'm not getting any views. I'm, I'm losing revenue. I'm, I, what, I'm losing subscribers. What's happening? How do I fix this? And you start trying to do more and more content, but you're burnt out. And your content's not funny or it's not appropriate. Or it's rushed and nobody likes it. So wouldn't you be better concentrating on stuff that you enjoy doing? Because, as I said, there's three and a half billion people out there. So if you like doing something, there's a good chance that some people are going to like watching that. And out of that huge pool of people out there, you know, if a thousand watch it, you're doing good. 
If 10,000 watch it, if 100,000 watch it, you're doing great. Nobody says you need to be Mr. Beast. In fact, at this moment in time, you probably don't want to be Mr. Beast. But we'll leave that for another day. But you're there as a creator, so what can be worse than pumping out stuff that you've ran out of the creative juice for? It's soul destroying. It's called burnout, isn't it? So don't get burnt out. Spread yourself as wide as you want to. Narrow yourself down as much as you want to. What can be worse than just going through the grind every day of putting out the same stuff with a different slant on it and the hope that people will keep watching it? What's the point in being a creator if you're not being creative? I don't think there is a point in that. And that's why I'm going to keep producing a number of different things and I'm probably just going to keep them all on the same channel because I used to think I should have a different channel for this, if I should have a different channel for that. But really, it didn't make any difference when we moved this stuff from one channel to another. In fact, it usually harmed the content. It didn't get viewed at all. So, I'm just going to keep going with one channel and put different things on it and see how that goes. Because it's like you've got a favourite out there. It's, I mean, say you watch something about photography and one day the guy starts talking about something completely off the wall, right, completely different, or he does a review on, on a pair of shoes he bought because he, when he does his photography, he does a lot of walking. And he does a review on a pair of shoes he got, and he says these are the best boots or shoes or whatever I've had for this kind of exercise. And you go, okay, well, that was interesting. Or do you go, I'm never watching that guy again because he didn't talk about cameras. You tell me. So if you're producing something that you're passionate about and you're interested in, that passion and interest will convey itself to your viewer, won't it? And are you not likely to attract more viewers who are then you know, enjoying the fact that you're passionate about a subject rather than just pumping out something for the sake of putting a video out there. I think that's going to attract people more than any algorithm or any niche. I may, of course, be completely wrong, in which case I will, I will gladly put my hands up and go, yeah, I was completely wrong. It hasn't worked. But the moment's working for me and I'm going to try and keep doing it. And I'll keep you posted. But I'll also be continuing to put up movie reviews. I'll still be doing conspiracy shows. I'll still be touching on the news. I'll, I'll even talk about strange things and some of my tales from when I was a police officer. So I do all these sorts of different things on the channel. And if you're interested in that, feel free to dig in and have a look. Because it costs you nothing except time. And I know time's a valuable commodity these, commodity these days. It might be entertaining, it might not. You might be one of the few that enjoys my content. I hope you've enjoyed this. Because I've enjoyed making it. Because it's something I've been thinking about for a while and I, I wanted to get my point across. And I don't think there's any need to be paying someone 50 bucks a month to look at stats. Because most of the stats you need are there in YouTube. You don't need them. In fact, I've been looking at stats for two years and I don't think it's made any difference. So now all I do is look at how things are going. Am I still getting views and am I still getting subscribers? Because if those two are going up, I can't see how I can be doing that much wrong. So that's what I'll be concentrating on in the near future. But I will drop on and, and update you about this at some point. And if you want to hear, you know, like, share, subscribe, you know all that drill. Because this actual video is targeted at you, at you creators. And if you ever want to join me on the channel, hit me up. Open invitation. We can talk about anything because it's just going to be another program on an all-encompassing channel. Isn't it? So there you go. Remember, what's the point in being a creator if you're not being creative?